Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to talk about Wonder Woman by Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, BK, Brent Casina. And today we're talking about Wonder Woman. This is the Wonder Woman run that got me into Wonder Woman. This came out with the new 52, launched with a new number one, emblazoned on the covers here. This is six volumes, and it's one complete story across these six volumes, and I thought this was phenomenal. Um, I'd never really been a huge Wonder Woman comic book fan before, but reading these single issues got me into Wonder Woman. So let's zoom down here a little bit so we can see better. Um, so this was the image that launched a thousand haters. Uh, not this one on the cover, but the original one. So the original image, uh, when they announced the new 52, was this image drawn by Cliff Chang, who's a phenomenal artist. Uh, what people hated was that apparently Wonder Woman was wearing pants. And people said, no, I don't want my Wonder Woman to wear pants. I want her to be cold. Uh, this was the original, like, sketch cover. But it was finished. Like, that's what her pants look like. Not terrible, right? But I think it was a little bit more to do with the fact that pre-New 52, J. Michael Straczynski was writing Wonder Woman, and he, uh, this is the Odyssey storyline, Wonder Woman forgot who she was, and wore some pants and a leather jacket designed by Jim Lee, and that costume was hated for good reason, so that when Wonder Woman showed up on this advertisement wearing pants, people said, oh no, not that again. Or maybe they're just a little bit sexist and don't want to admit it, that women can wear pants. So personally, I don't mind the pants. I don't mind Superman not wearing underpants. I don't care, as long as they're cool. As long as it looks cool. I thought the pants looked cool in that um, cover design, to be quite honest. Uh, let's show it here. I thought this looked cool. And remember, this wasn't the image they saw. Like, you can find it on the internet, I believe. It looks just like this, but with pants. And then they changed the coloring or whatever to make it work. So yeah, I really didn't understand what the outrage was. But then again, I have a brain. I can think for myself. And I let other people think for themselves too. So honestly, that's probably why I didn't understand the reaction. Anyway. So, what is so cool about this Wonder Woman run? Well, forget everything you ever knew about Wonder Woman. Forget the George Perez stuff. We're starting over, right? So, Wonder Woman is here. She's battling some forces. She's battling the gods. And we're meeting the gods as interpreted by Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang. Uh, and their designs are really, really cool. Fucking Hermes, of all people, has bird legs with wings on them. That makes sense, right? He can fly with the wings. Why would he have wings? Well, maybe he's part bird, so he's bird-like. Um, I believe Apollo is this guy right here that kind of looks like magma, and then he can turn himself on and off and burns people. Um, I forget. She's not a. She's like a demigod. I can't remember her name. Uh, Hera is here with this feather uh, cloak of feathers with peacock feathers. You got Zeus in here. You got Hippolyta is blonde. The island of um, Amazons, all that stuff. Really, really cool. I really like the design. This, I think that's Zeus over there. Uh, they changed the origin here a little bit. This is where I believe they made Wonder Woman a child of Zeus for the first time was in this book. Here's um, Ares, the god of war. You know, people didn't like that. They liked the... Um, you know, the old school design. But I, I this is the first Wonder, Wonder Woman I ever read, like, all the way through. So I really liked this book. Um, I thought it was interesting to, to see everything kind of reinvented. And since I didn't have an attachment to the old stuff, I thought it was kind of cool. So here's uh, Volume 2. You got Tony Akins. Come, he was in Volume 1 also. But Tony Akins becomes, like, the back, not the backup artist, but when Cliff Chang needs a break, Tony Akins steps in. And delivers. Boy, does he fucking deliver. Tony Akins is one of these artists that uh, needs more love. So here you got Hephaestus and Hades with like the candles on his head. He's a he's a kid. That was really interesting. So Tony Akins' style is a little bit more detailed, a little bit less like big cartoony than um, 
Cliff Chang's, but they work well together. They really do. Uh, especially in a book like this, where I think Tony Akins does a majority of it in the second volume. And then you have Cliff Chang coming back here with this issue. So, and it all kind of revolves around this woman who's pregnant, I think is a child of Zeus, and Hera, again, is wrathful, wanting to come after it. Kid gives, or woman gives birth, that kind of thing. And it, it keeps going, it keeps going. Like, this is six issues. You got war here. Orion comes in the picture, and that was pretty wild for to see Orion dealing with Wonder Woman rather than, you know, the Justice League and stuff like that, and your introduction to High Father. All that started here in the Wonder Woman book in the New 52. I thought that was really interesting to have that take place here as opposed to, to Justice League, and then you had the new gods versus the old gods, that kind of thing. I thought that was interesting. And then it kind of wraps up here with five and six, Flesh and Bones. But I really did like this story reading it, and I can't wait to reread it. I just picked these up off of uh, someone in a Facebook group looking to sell them. They offloaded them to me for really cheap, so thank you. But I really did like this story. I cannot wait to reread it. Really, really cool. Oh, yeah, this is Poseidon. Yeah, when you first meet some of these gods, you're like, who is that? And then you're like, oh, my gosh, that's really inventive and really cool. Uh, this is Artemis, god of the, goddess of the moon in the hunt, hence why she looks like a glowing moon uh, deer thing. So, really, really cool. Again, I like this take. And unfortunately, this did not stick around. They eventually, they kind of did away with the gods once Brian Azzarello left. Um, I think David Finch and his wife started working on the book and bringing it back down to earth, so to speak. And then when you had the DC Rebirth, you entirely gutted this era of Wonder Woman and everything Azarella set up here and went back to uh, Greg Rucka, who went back to the George Perez well, if you would. And that is where we have Wonder Woman now. So if you want to read a different take on Wonder Woman, I really do recommend this. It's got a great story. It's got great art. And if, uh, if you aren't attached to the old 80s stuff from George Perez, I think this is a, a cool place to read Wonder Woman. It made me fall in love with the character and start picking up Wonder Woman books on the regular. You know, I would not have picked up maybe the Greg Rucka stuff from uh, Rebirth if I had not read and enjoyed this. I would not have sought out the Greg Rucka trades that I have if I had not read and enjoyed this. So this was my gateway to Wonder Woman. Maybe that's why I love it so much, but I think it's really cool. And I think it's worth checking out, especially if you can find it on a deal and get all six volumes in one fell swoop or something like that. I imagine that they're out there still and uh, probably relatively cheap. I don't think anybody likes this run as much as I do. So let me know down below what you think of the Azarello New 52 Wonder Woman run, and I will see you guys next time in the funny pages.